Hello everybody and welcome to the Fleming Film Show. I'm Robbie Fleming and joining me is... It's J.D. Irvier, Justin Doyle. Hello Justin, how you been? I'm good, Rob, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, I'm not too bad. Uh, you suggested uh, today's topic, would you like to introduce it? Yes, so in celebration of the new musical movie that came out on HBO Max, you know, me over here at Worth of View, I love a musical movie. And In the Heights was released in theaters and on HBO Max. Uh, and uh, so in celebration of that, we are doing our top five favorite musical movies. Yes, I've got my list at the ready. And I am ready as well. It was, it's tough because I have like nine. Almost 10, but I have like nine really, really solid movies here. But we're just going to talk five of them, and then I'll, I'll, I'll give some also rants a little later. Awesome, awesome. I'm going to kick off uh, my number five with Grease. I'll go Grease Lightning. Uh, Grease Lightning. Good, good pick. And everyone's top five favorite musicals, I would think. But um, I am going a little different direction, and my number five is Sister Act. Again, good choice. Yes, I love Sister Act. Um, you want to talk Grease first? Yeah, so Grease was probably the first musical film I got into where I liked the story behind it. But I never used to like musicals because some musical songs really annoy me, but... There's no song that's annoying in Greece. Every song is something to sing and dance to. Yeah. And you have some pretty solid stars in there. Olivia Newton-John and John Travolta. That's right. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if there were big stars at that time. Because, um, yeah, I mean, John Travolta, um, Olivia Newton-John were just like huge huge stars i mean olivia newton john had spawned her doing like a work i mean she was just everywhere for a really really long time um but yeah really solid choice what do you like about grease the music of course did it hit home for you you know being a um like a high school teenage movie uh kind sure, of watching, maybe you're young yeah i don't know whether obviously the u.s high schools are different to the british high schools but it is a good high school movie, but I do like the 50s style, and I think that's what I like about it the most. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the style. Um, they, they smoke cigarettes. I mean, even at that age. I don't even know if you had to be 16 then or 18 then. Uh, but, yeah, they were just smoking cigarettes, and they had the white shirts and the black shirts and the rolled up uh, sleeves. Um, it's a really sleek, sl slick look, for sure. And then the girls with their dresses, those skirts that are like, you know, frilly, and they have like little puppies or whatever on the on the sides. Uh, yeah, interesting look there. Yeah. But uh, anything else about Greece? Uh, I've only seen parts of the second one, and I think that's a bit unnecessary. Yeah. Uh, there's not many musical movies that have number twos. I don't even know if there is one. Because Grease 2, I think, was a made-for-TV movie. Um, and also, uh, yeah, I think that was one of the reasons why there isn't many twos in, in the musical w world. Except for the one that's at my number five is Sister Act. Sister Act 2, Back in the Habit, is a really, really good movie, but... Um, uh, it's there's less music in there and less of them singing whereas it's sister act is is mostly singing and boy is it good um this was the, one of the first movies that my grandmother showed me when i was a kid that was a musical and it really got me into it and it's like about god so she was totally into that and uh um it really just struck home i i know all the songs by heart uh and then watching them, they're now on Disney Plus. It really just shows you and gives you nostalgia feel. And um, Whoopi Goldberg is one of my favorite actresses. You know, uh, obviously she doesn't really act anymore, but back in the you know early '90s and all through the '90s, she worked a lot. 
Uh, yeah, the movie came out in 1992, and it really made me happy. Have you seen it, Rob? Yes, I've seen Sister Act. It's, uh, I've, I've been getting more into Whoopi Goldberg movies a lot more recently, and I think it's because I watched uh, Sister Act. Yeah, she's really solid, and, and uh, yeah, Ghost is a tremendous movie. That's her best. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Um, okay, what's your number four? My number four is technically a biopic. It's based on a man called Elton John, and it's called Rocket Man. <laughs> oh, we have a match. <laughs> My number four is also Rocket Man. Oh, awesome, awesome. What did you think to Rocket Man? Because I saw it in cinema and I loved it. I saw it in cinema and loved it as well. I mean, we talked about this on other shows because Rocket Man definitely comes up a lot. It's, it's so good. Uh, Taron Edgerton is so damn good. And he really embodies um, the man. You know, he really just embodies him. And he's a really good singer. And the way that this movie was elevated by these performances, these musical performances, and make it magical to almost seem like that's what Elton John was, was magic back in the day uh, on that piano. And he really, really is still to this day magic on that piano. Um, but also the friendship and the love that, you know, Elton and um, uh, his partner had for each other, even though be it non-sexual, but just all professional. And that's just a really good friendship and bond that I would love to have, you know, uh, and, and continue on. But yeah, it's just a really, really special movie with really good performances, great music. And if you're not an Elton John fan, you will be by the end of Rocket Man. Definitely, definitely. Because after I watched Rocket Man, I started listening to more of his stuff, and he is really good. Yeah. What did you like about Rocket Man? Mainly Taron Egerton's performance the most, but I did kind of like how. They use their songs as musical numbers. I kind of like the dancing and stuff. Yeah. Um, the stadium scene is so metal. And then uh, when he, even when he's in those smaller venues, I really feel like they elevate those performances and uh, you know make them more extreme and big than they actually were because they probably did feel that way live and in person. You know. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, what's your number three then? Well, this movie er, is very near and dear to my heart. There has been other versions of it out there, but this movie uh, is the 1967 version of The Producers with Gene Wilder and Zero Mostel, uh, directed by Mel Brooks, of course. Um, Gene Wilder is one of my all-time favorites. He's one of the greats, great actors out there. And uh, I didn't get to see this movie until I was an adult, um, you know, because I really started to uh, watch every movie that Gene Wilder was in. And I just fell in love. I mean, it's definitely, you know, we, we do have the, the Will Ferrell version and um, Broderick and Nathan Lane. But this, the original, the way it was meant to be... Uh, there is no uh, better um, Leo Bloom than Gene Wilder. So, uh, and then Zero Mostel is, you know, a force to be reckoned with back in the day. And he really is a Max Bialystok and lived up uh, that name. So, and then, you know, who, and who doesn't love a Mel Brooks film? No, I love Mel Brooks. Yeah. Um, I recommend the producer's 1967 version. If you guys, have, I know, you know, I think the 2005 version, you know, has been seen, of course. But check out this one because it's it's the reason why there is that one. And um, yeah, it's just a solid, solid film. Yeah, so I've seen that version. I'm not seeing the Matthew Broderick version. I'm not really a fan of Matthew Broderick outside Travis Bueller's anyway. So I would rather stick with Mal Brooks. There you go. What's your number three? It's an old 50s movie, and it's called Singing in the Rain. Oh, yes. Such a solid, solid film on HBO. What's so, what's, why is this number three? 
tells it it's about Hollywood. Yeah. It's the second yeah. film about Hollywood on my list. Was, uh, are, have you talked about the other one? Uh, not yet. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay, so, yeah, uh, it's, it's a damn near perfect movie. The thing, the reason, I guess I just, and it's what's been going on with me lately, is I see these old movies, these old classics, these ones that are shining, you know, Dr. Strangelove or how, you know, I learned to stop wearing and love the bomb. Um, uh, and, uh, one of the other ones I saw recently, and they're just not connecting on the same level that they might have back in the day. Now, Singing in the Rain is really, really good, and the music, of course, is awesome, but it's just, like, I see Rocket Man, and, you know, uh, more than I'm going to talk about, and they're just, they're just on these whole different levels than Singing in the Rain. Singing in the Rain is so simplistic, and it's just about, like, singing and dancing, and it's, now, now there's these spectacles, but Let's not take anything away from Singing in the Rain because it really made an impact on musical movies. And being so simple, it still was, you know, a, a spectacle. So uh, there's nothing against it, but it's just not hitting me here where I feel like it needs to hit me when I watch movies. Um, but anyway, you were saying that you love Singing in the Rain. <laughs> yes, even though the title and the famous scene have nothing to do with the movie. None. None, except for the fact that that he is just singing in the rain. Literally, but my favourite scene is when they're singing "Good Morning" the three of them, and well, not Gene Kelly, but the other guy. He is just so fun the way he jumps on walls and stuff. Yeah, uh, Gene Kelly is a star. I just can't help but know that he's just. A star. He's a superstar. Um, and there's not many people that can pull that off. No, no, there are not many people like Gene Kelly anymore. No, no. There's. I don't know if there are superstars anymore. There's. There's franchise stars, but I don't know if there's superstars anymore, like movie stars. I don't. I don't know if they're around anymore. Yeah, we'll have to have that conversation in a later episode. Ooh, oh, I love it. All right. Yeah. So what's your number two? My number two is The Great Showman. Now, it could very easily be number one. But my number one, I love so much. But The Great Showman, perfect. <laughs> I don't care that they didn't go by his real story. What I do care about is how damn good the acting is, not only by Gene Hackman, but all of the supporting cast. And every single song is a banger. Every single song is so good. I have this movie <laughs> on Fandango now. I have it on Blu-ray. I have the vinyl. I have the, the CD on my phone. I know every word to every song. I love the greatest showman and i was watching it just like a couple weeks ago and i got teary-eyed because you know zendaya is trying to get into um have you seen this great showman yes this is uh my partner charlotte's favorite musical film so i have seen it <laughs> okay okay so Okay, so yeah, so I just felt really bad because, you know, Zendaya and Zac Efron are going on this date and these white people look down on him and her and she just turns around and runs away and it's just so heartbreaking and it really got to me, even though I've seen it, you know, 15 times by now. But uh, I love it. I will listen to the soundtrack anytime. I won't turn, you know, the channel for songs. I love every single one it's a near movie and uh it's number two could be number one on my list because i just love that movie so damn much nice nice and uh, number two is a movie i love so damn much but there was one that was beating it but i'll talk about number one later number two is the film that is probably the shortest best picture with her and it's la la land uh, well, yes, it didn't win Best Picture, but yeah, it it, uh, it it was told that it won Best Picture, 
Um, but Moonlight ended up sweeping in there because, uh, you know, I, I guess they thought it was a better movie. But yeah, La La Land's on one of my is one of my also rants. This is a really good film. But please talk about your number two movie. So La La Land is Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling, who I would consider actually superstars. Hmm. And they they play a boy and a girl. Uh, Emma's trying to make it as an actress. He's a jazz pianist who's trying to launch his music career. And they fall in love and have this little uh, love story together. And John Legend's there, and he's quite cool. Yes. Um, I really like this film. When I saw it in the theaters, when it came out, you know, love the musicals, I was so excited. But the first... The opening scene on the uh, on the freeway is it was it wasn't sh- like live. The audio wasn't live. It was you can clearly hear that it was recorded in a in a studio because they're outside and you would you know hear lots of traffic and whatnot. But coming off the hills of Les Miserables that came out the year before, where it was filmed with everyone seeing live, I I was like slapped in the face of like this is pathetic. Like you guys, you guys should go after that. Like try to be that and do do that. And now you're doing this. You're doing old studio stuff. But then the rest of the movie happened and blew me away. So uh, it took me, you know, more than one viewing to really, really love this one. But it was one of my favorite movies of that year. Yes, it's one of mine. So I love the cinematography, the music. And the editing. I like the whole production behind it. And I think Damien Chazelle, is that his name? The director? He does a really good job of directing this movie. I I really want to see more of his work uh, work because I love La La Land and I love Whiplash. Yeah. Um, What about First Man? He did that one too. I need to see that one. Um, It's not as fun as La La Land. Um, but also the create the song creators are the same for our number two because um, it's the same guys that created Greatest Showman songs. Nice, very nice. So it's quite cool that we have a semi match then. Yeah, yeah. Um. All right. Well, I know what your number one is. You know what my number one is. I know what your number one is because <laughs> it's one of my all time favorite movies. Moulin Rouge. That's my number one. I thought it would be Moulin Rouge. I know you've always been wanting to like tell me about how much you love Moulin Rouge. So take it away, Justin. All right. So Moulin Rouge, we have Nicole Kidman. We have um, Ewan McGregor. But also what we have here in 1999, when this movie came out, I was in high school. Uh, love was all I cared about. You know, when I was younger, like love was all I cared about. I loved relationships and girls and just, you know, stories. And this is one of the greatest love stories there is because you have a courtesan falling in love with a penniless man all through love and and singing and song. And let's just, this is a Baz Luhrmann film. Let's not forget how well he does production and how well he gets his costume design and how great a cinematographer is this movie is a masterpiece because it's so beautifully shown to us and given us it's dark vibrant colors which is weird it's like an oxymoron but it's really like popping blacks and reds and and oranges hues and um but they they just pop all over and you know gold of course um the thing that makes this not uh, uh I, I mean it's perfect to me but what there's no original songs unfortunately really they really use a lot of medleys and a lot of um you know elton john song um but yeah, there's there's a lot of songs in here that are that ones that we've heard before, but are remastered and redone and reshaped. Was up for best picture, didn't win, but uh, it's a damn damn good film, and I'm really uh, it's what it's in my top five favorites ever. So Moulin Rouge, I love love, and I love Ewan McGregor and Nicole Kidman's love. 
This Mulan Rouge is a film I didn't like till my second viewing of because everything's just going too fast. Yeah, it does take more than one viewing because you're yeah you're watching you're like I don't even know what I just saw what was it even about and then you watch it again and you're like okay I get this I get that I love this song I love that song um, yeah this it's 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 uh, it's fantastic film. It is good. It is good. I like Nicole Kidman's uh, performance in that quite a lot. Yeah. And the, and the bloke from Hot Fuzz with the he's the ringleader guy. He's quite cool as well. Yeah. Oh, can I get his name without looking it up? Um, B. It starts with a B. Oh, he's he's always uh, in the English movies. He's in Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, Jim Broadbent. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, I knew it was a B. All right, let's talk about your number one, the Best Picture winning Chicago. Yeah, that makes sense. I knew it was going to be your number one. I have said this before. I got to see it in London uh, on the West End and had a great time. Cuba Goody Jr. was the lead, and uh, it was really spectacular. But this movie, your number one, hit it. I just think this is a really well-made movie in terms of production, and their performances are just phenomenal all the way through. I love Renee Zellweger. Richard Gere, Catherine Zeta-Jones, and Queen Latifah, they all, they're all the stars of that film. And obviously John C. Riley, of course. And I just love the direction. And obviously I love how the music, I love the musical numbers and how uh, Tay Diggs introduces them. I just feel like this is a really fun movie. Yeah, yeah. And deserve it of its, uh, I think, uh, supporting actress win and best picture win. Um but it, yeah, I mean, Renee Zellweger really was hitting her stride in this movie. People were like, she, she can't do this. And then it turned out she could. And yeah, I mean, even Richard Gere singing isn't half bad to listen to because the movie, the movie shines in itself. Um, yeah, the cell block tank or the, it's not cell block tango. The one where the girls talk about there how... There is cell block tang- tango, because I've rewatched it uh, a couple of weeks ago. I showed it to a friend who's never watched it before, so I showed him for the first time. That's the one where all the girls talk about how they murdered their husbands? Yes. Okay, it's so damn long. It's just a long, long, long song. So when you're listening to, like, you know, soundtrack, um, you know, soundtrack, like, on P- Pandora and whatever, it's like, that song is like 12 minutes and then it's you know finally it goes on to the next song but uh i mean yeah but, but that's good it's still engaging even though it's a long song yeah definitely definitely but it's more the story in chicago well, what makes it stand out it's more the story in chicago yes it's the story it goes it suits the musical numbers and the character as well yeah, and to have a female females in in prison is interesting too. Um, but uh, yeah, really good, really good film. One I'd like to revisit. Definitely, definitely. Um, ones that didn't make the list: uh, La La Land, um, A Star Is Born. Uh, you know the Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper. Um, Rent. Which is a really good movie, but I actually just enjoyed the theatrical play more because um, I got to see it in L.A. here. And Sing Street, which is from your neck of the woods, uh, is a really, really good film about uh, kids in high school who become a band. And, uh, you know, he just wants her to love him. And um, he he creates this band to get a girl's attention. So uh, it's just really, really damn good. Sing Street, I think it's out on Netflix. Nice. I do have a couple of honourable mentions. Oliver, as I mentioned to you before, that's a recommendation if you like musicals. Yeah. I recently, I recently watched Cabaret. I thought that was quite interesting. Yeah, I watched that this week for it's a prep. Nice. 
Nice. And obviously the Blues Brothers. Who doesn't love the Blues Brothers? I also watched that for the first time this week, yep. Nice. Very good. And finally, there is The Great Showman. Yeah. Should be on your top five, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, but I love Grease and Rocket Man and Zing yeah. in the Rain. And it, it's the Marvel. reason... Uh, yeah, it's the reason. Yeah, La La Land. It would have been in top ten for sure. Um, okay, let's run it down. My number five was Sister Act. My number five was Grease. My number four was Rocket Man. My number four was also Rocket Man. Yeah, because we're Rocket Men. Uh, my number three was The Producers. My number three is also a classic. It's Singing in the Rain. My number two could be my number one, The Greatest Showman. My number two is the shortest Best Picture winning film, La La Land. And my number one is Moulin Rouge. And my number one is clearly the greatest musical film of all time, Chicago. <laughs> clearly. <laughs> um, cool. Well, yeah, go see In the Heights, you guys. It's a lot of fun. Also, uh, I'm really excited. I got tickets to see Hamilton coming in August to L.A., so I'm really happy to see that. Oh, and nice. Then, uh, we got this package where we're also going to get to see Moulin Rouge. Um, there's a Pretty Woman musical. There's also a Tootsie musical. And then uh, we're going to go. I'm going to see Rent again because I'm really excited to see it again. Have you ever seen the American Psycho musical? That sounds <laughs> like, a, like a weird combination. Yeah, no, definitely not. But uh, I wouldn't miss it. If it's, if it's a musical coming through, I'll watch it. Nice. Nice. Right, I'm going to have to uh, leave things here. Thank you so much for joining me again, Justin. Thanks for having me, Rob. I love talking musicals. I wish we you know, had more time. We could talk each one over and over and over again. Definitely, definitely. All right. Well, thanks to uh, yeah everyone listening and the Patreon for supporting Rob. He deserves it and so much more. And yeah, until next time. Until next time. Thank you, Ben, Sean, and the commentary filmmakers. And thank you for all these great directors, cast, and group who have made all these great musical films. Yeah. We, we wouldn't uh, be talking if it wasn't for you. <laughs> Until next time. All right. Bye, guys. Bye bye, Justin. Bye, Rob. See ya.